Oh, wait, wait a second. Well, I can't speak. You know, my favorite fox. Can I? <laughs> oh, seriously, I'm off brand. <laughs> this is not working. All right, not better. So, so that's me. This is me as well. This is my fo uh, my fox. He would kill me. Uh, uh, this is Bela, the, uh, we are both from Hungary, uh, Budapest. Um, yeah, as, as were previously introduced, I'm a JavaScript developer, a bunch of open source, doing a bunch of open source stuff. Uh, and in my free time, uh, I uh, muck around with microcontrollers and hardware, not, not as much as some of you some a few folks, but but you know just casually, and I and I love what just uh, Chimai said just a few moments ago, and you will see why uh, in just a moment. So actually, I have I think I have a pretty cool demo, and I only have like 14 minutes left, so I'm not gonna talk a whole lot uh, and not gonna show you the slides, but. If you are interested or want to check out the source or stuff, uh, there is a talk.flag.is slash play. You, you will access the slides and you can, you can check out the links and shit. Uh, there is also like uh, Twitter channels for Cloudy Boy, which is the thing I'm going to be talking about, and SL Software, which is the person who is talking about the thing I'm going to talk about. Uh, so feel free to ping me on Twitter. Uh, and. Uh, like I uh, was announced, uh, I'm going to be talking about putting JavaScript uh, and games onto microcontrollers. And to, to get a grasp of what I'm going to be talking about, whoever, like we have been talking about uh, Kickstarter today, so whoever, whoever knows what these things are. Who's seen these uh, ever? Uh, if it helps, this one of one of these is the Ardu Boy. The other is called the Tiny Arcade. Uh, I will help you a bit. This might be a much much more. So these ones you probably more familiar. <laughs> so basically, what happens here is this is just this except a nicer um, polycarbonate housing. Uh, the Ardu Boy is basically a Ardu Boy uh, Arduino Micro. Uh, packaged up with a screen and a few buttons, and that's cool, right? Uh, you can you can uh, you can just order the parts, create it, like put a buzzer on it, a few buttons, uh, wire it up, and it will, you know, it will just work. And let's see if this works. No, I'm just plugging it in for power. Ta -da! I'm gonna show you this a bit later. So, and then you got a game on there, right? And that's pretty cool, except, you know, what you need to do that. Uh, the idea was, you know, they, they made this Kickstarter campaign and it was like, okay, so I, everybody, everybody can just download the Arduino ID and create these games, right? They, they would just upload them to, to GitHub or whatever and we can share around all the games that they made. You know what the problem with that is? Uh, the problem with that is that uh, with Arduino IDE, you're programming in C and C++, right? Uh, not as easy to get people to, get pro uh, to start programming C and C++ games on like tiny uh, hardware, uh, like resource control and uh, resource constrained hardware. Uh, because, because uh, they are going to need a bunch of, uh, they're going to need to be, no, okay, it runs. They're going to need to be, uh, understand, uh, they're going to need to understand the quirks of C and C++ and they will need to uh, figure out how this, how all this works. The other problem is, is Arduino ID is not the easiest thing to, to be working with in the first place. And then again, uh, you're, we are not talking about blinking LEDs anymore, right? We, we want to put some graphics in there. For some graphics, you will need some bitmaps, sprites. Uh, you will need some sounds. You will need some, some tools to create all these graphic assets uh, and all the assets that you would be needing. So here is where Cloudy Boy comes in. 
But, uh, at the very first moment, it was just a C, C++ IDE uh, to, create web ga uh, to create games for the Arduino boy. Uh, this is where I, where I go back to uh, what I said. You know, the web is pretty cool that you can create all these nice interfaces, and you wouldn't even know. Uh, let me see if I can get... Yeah. So what you've just seen, and I will be talking about this uh, in a little bit more detail. What you've just seen on the, on the device itself is from a talk I gave last year at a conference called RUJS. <laughs> uh, so what you've just seen uh, was this game that you might know from uh, a certain web browser. <laughs> the problem with, uh, the other problem is, you know, you create an, an IDE and then you are putting, uh, putting uh, source code, compiling the source code and putting it onto the device itself. Th that's pretty cool, except you, know, you still had to program in C. And this is where another thing comes in that I just uh, pretty recently created, which is basically you can create the game in JavaScript uh, with JavaScript APIs using the canvas. If any of you uh, uh, were working with web dev, uh, you know, you're just creating uh, using a library uh, or basically using the, the built-in uh, JavaScript canvas. And you can create a game that later on uh, some nifty stuff is going uh, around in the background and uh, your game will be uh, running on the browser so you can preview it like, like I just did. But also what, uh, what it will do is, oh I just messed up, no, it doesn't matter. I will show you the other demo. So the game will just run on the device itself, right? Uh, uh, on, uh, on, the, on, the, uh, on the browser itself. You don't have to, you know, when you're developing for microcontroller hardware, you would be, you know, make some code, compile it, flash it, wait until it flashes, try it out, oh shit, it, uh, I screwed up a variable declaration or something, you know, debug, uh, stuff like this. Now you can just do this on your laptop uh, in, in, uh, uh, in JavaScript. And at the end, when it works, actually just compile it to the device and put it onto the device. So to see that I'm not talking shit, here, let me see, camera. So, <laughs> hello. There we are. So I'm just gonna plug this in. So now it runs uh, the dino game, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say, hey, you see, so on the left, si left hand side, you will see a JavaScript code Basically, it is 100 lines of code. The whole game that you're, uh, you're seeing here is basically 100 lines of JavaScript. Pretty straightforward, you know, you can shoot around aliens, uh, space invaders. Uh, it's, it's one of the classics. Uh, what you see is 100 lines of JavaScript code. When I press this button on the top left, what it does, it compiles actually, uh, it translates basically into C code. You know, some things work, some things don't work. Like, we don't want to uh, create platform parity. There are a bunch of things. You don't want to replicate the whole of JavaScript in C. Like, that's not the point here. Uh, uh, you don't want to, you know, all the quirks and, and edge cases of JavaScript, you don't want to replicate them in C. Uh, but most stuff works, and uh, like the basics work. So what you will see here is when it compiles the code into C, I can just uh, pl uh, press the flash button and you will see the, all right, there you go. Like it's already flashing and ta-da. And I'm unable to play with, but it works basically. Nice. <laughs> and again, I'm, 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 uh, I'm referring back to Chiamai's talk uh, because, okay, so this device is basically connected by a serial port. How do you flash it, right? Uh, so currently, uh, I also have a daemon, which is basically very similar to, to what the folks uh, over there use. 
you install the daemon in your local device. Uh, on the cloud, your code is compiled. You just use a website as an editor or a local, like uh, here I'm, looking, uh, I'm running a local version just for demo's sake and to ease up on demo gods. But you could be running this whole thing from a web page, from a web browser, and just using a local daemon to flash your devices. Uh, for some other devices like this one, uh, which is totally empty, like no battery wise, which is not useful. Uh, so with the tiny arcade, you actually get a micro SD card. So what you can do is basically you create your code, you do you hit compile, you download it, you're offered to download a hex file, or well, basically a bin file, uh, which is basically the firmware. You just copy that firmware, like download the firmware, copy it into the onto the SD card, hook it up to the device, and it just works. Uh, you don't even need any flashing or any extra hardware or demons to run. Uh, 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 somebody showed the BBC Microbit. The BBC Microbit, uh, you can just flash from your Android device uh, because it just works over Bluetooth. Um, and, you know, uh, there is, there's just one thing uh, that you get uh, this very easy flow. You know, people can create games. Uh, and debug games and, uh, and share it onto microcontrollers. The other nice thing about this is actually uh, you yourself can play this because this is just a web, right? This is just a web page. So if you hit, let me see if I can find a link. No, there you go. If you go on your mobile phone or your laptop and hit cld.bi slash rurejs, you can play the exact same game, right? Because it's not just made for a microcontroller, it is made for the web. So it will work on your mobile phone, it will work on your laptop computer. You can share your games with friends, uh, you know, have them play it if they don't have a device either. Uh, the other interesting and nice thing about this is just one more uh, bit that is pretty cool. So, okay. Uh, for example, okay, I don't care about JavaScript, right? I, I know C, you would say. I, I can create games, right? And I wonder uh, how you would create the bitmaps for this, because I'm pretty sure nobody would want, uh, it is pretty terrible UX to be creating bitmaps like this, <laughs> right? This is basically, uh, you know, every byte uh, is like eight pixels, a colon of eight pixels. Every, by, every bit you set is basically going to be a, a pixel represented in the final image. Uh, you will see uh, when you have a web ID, a web interface, you can actually extend the features of the web interface with stuff like this. So uh, this is great for learning, for example, because now you know what kind of stuff, like uh, I'm going to rewrite this to FF, and you will see it change. Uh, but it's not just interesting because of that, because at the end of the day, you'll get this image, right? You'll get this image, so what I can do now is I can actually click it, if the demo gods are with me, or maybe I will reload the page just to make sure. Or oh, there you go. And how about flying saucers? I uh, hear people like flying saucers. Uh, let's just, mm, yeah, ah, that, oh, let's, let's make, uh, like this, this should do. Et voila, you got a little icon of a flying saucer in there, so when I go in there, you will see it actually changes the code. Uh, oh, this is a special representation for easier, uh, easier programming. So now I compile the code, you will see it changes there. I'm gonna flash it again, see if this works out. And... Ta -da -da. You don't see a thing, but here's gonna be easier. Oh, there you go. So you will see the little flying saucers are in there. So basically, it not just gives you the tools to uh, 
to put games on microcontrollers, but also uh, gives you uh, the tools to increase your own productivity and uh, make more creative stuff. So if any of you wants to try this, uh, feel free to ping me uh, after the talk or anything. And you can fly the slides on that link. And thank you for listening.